Hello everyone and welcome back to Universal Studios Florida. Tonight is the first night of Halloween Horror Nights 32. Finally, we're here after all the prep, all the updates, all the announcements, a whole year of covering Halloween Horror Nights for you guys. We're here. The event is just in a few hours and I can't wait to go in there and experience everything that Universal has to offer for the night and when it comes to the houses, when it comes to the scare zones. I don't have Express tonight. It's not really advised, but I'm going solo without Express. I'm going to be seeing what happens. I'm going to do what I say in the videos and enjoy the event my own way i got my odd fellow shirt on i'm ready to go I'm, I'm so excited i can't wait so let's just hop in there waste no more time and get into it halloween horror nights is here let's go you know as much as signs and trusses and medallions and stuff are great i think it finally feels real once we start to see merch in the main gift shop and yeah plenty of halloween horror nights merch up here it just it just brings me the vibe it puts me right there at the event and i'm just I'm beyond pumped. They got a whole Chucky section right here with new pins, signs, bags, all kinds of stuff here. With the talk of the town being this voice activated Chucky popcorn bucket. I mean, it's really, really cool. Is it $45 cool? Uh, probably not for me, but it's very, very cool. Right here we have a new Exorcist section with some new merch I haven't seen. This shirt right here. I haven't seen this one before. As well as like candles, patches here. I love these buttons. I'm probably going to get these because I love Halloween Horror Nights buttons and I want to collect them all this year. We have a little Universal Monsters and Masks section with some of the merch I showed off before. I love this shirt. It's one of my favorite shirts they have this year. And lots and lots and lots of Stranger Things. Hellfire Club. They have a whole like Hellfire section over here. Surfer Boy Pizza. Lots of Surfer Boy Pizza merch. And we have some of the Oddfellow merch with this really cool Scare Zone mug with all the Scare Zones. We also have a section for our Lord and Savior Lil Boo with a... Lil Boo Succulent, which I think is going to be a pretty hot item this year. As you can see, it's I think like 2.30 now and they're prepping for Stain Scream over here in the New York section. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a very busy Stain Scream if we have Stranger Things and The Exorcist back here in New York. But pretty, pretty exciting to see these up. That means we're getting closer. Coming around the corner by Fast and Furious, and here we go. Chucky Ultimate Kill Count. Do a review afterwards because I cannot film inside, but I'm excited to get into this. All right, we are on our way into Chucky. We have boxes on the facade, so let's head in. All right, taking it to the phone because it's still raining out, but Chucky Ultimate Kill Count was awesome. It gave me everything I wanted. The scenes from the show that you want to see are in there, but then they add stuff, breaking the fourth wall and stuff like that. Really a good time. Uh, I'm not expecting it to be as good as it was and really did a lot of interesting effects. So Chucky, really good. I actually was pretty surprised. All right, coming up past Chucky, we have a 10 minute wait for Dr. Oddfellow. This is one of my most hyped of the year. Maybe my mo most hyped of the year. It's a lot of walking back to the Sprung 10, but a walk I'm willing to make for the doctor. I welcome all right, the camera's a little blurry from the rain, but we just did Oddfellow, so now it is time for The Darkest Deal. I'm actually pretty interested in this house. This is one of the ones I was kind of excited for, so this is blurry. It's a 60-minute wait, so let's see what happens here. So I popped off in the Men in Black gift shop because I wanted to talk about both Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins and The Darkest Deal. Two houses I was looking forward to and uh, they both exceeded my expectations. They were both really, really good. 
let's start with Oddfellow because that was the first one I did. I was really excited to voyage into the world of Dr. Oddfellow and without spoiling it, there are some great moments with him, but there's also a really interesting take on the sort of carnival theme they've done in the past. It's not exactly what you might be expecting and that is, I think, the best part about it. It's something completely different, um, a different take on the carnival idea. And then moving to the darkest deal, it's a very interesting house. I do want to go through that one more. Um, I want to go through all these more, but that one specifically to get sort of the story aspects that I missed um, on my first run through. Let's just say Pine Straw Spruce isn't the only character affected by the collector, um, and I'm going to leave it at that. But yeah, really interesting house, really great creature design in here, and a lot of scares that I wasn't really expecting. All right, so it is nighttime now, and it has stopped raining, and I wanted to come out here and appreciate this design on the Men in Black building. Of course, they always do designs like this, um, but I really love it with the HHN 32 and the Zodiac signs along the side. Really cool to represent Oddfellow. I think the Zodiacs are kind of a big theme this year. So I popped up to the quietest place I could probably find at Universal during HHN. That's King's Cross back here. Also great AC as well. But we're gonna go forward and check out some of the scare zones. I um, mean, I really wanna see what the scare zones are all about. We've obviously been tracking the progress of the scare zones um, through the entire season. So I'm really curious to see how they are, what kind of creatures we can see in them, and how it all flows. So let's start off by heading into Shipyard 32. Shipyard 32, what a fun scare zone. This is your nostalgia sort of scare zone. It's bringing back a lot of characters that you've seen in events past. Uh, we have like some tooth fairies, we have some high vampires, some of the ones from last year. There are actually two different casts, which is really, really interesting. But anyway, if you can hear the music, we're gonna head into our next scare zone, Vamp 69, Summer of Blood. A million years, I can Let's talk about Vamp 69. What a fun scare zone. I know we were expecting this one to be a lot of fun, especially because the past Vamp scare zones have been kind of fun. Also went out of focus again, but really, really enjoyed the Vamp scare zone this year. I think it's a lot of fun. Lots of great character interactions with the civilians. Now, as fun as scare zones can be, I'm in the mood for another house, and I've heard really good things about this one from team member previews, Blood Moon Dark Offerings. They just talked about it in the last video, so let's hop in and see what this one has to offer because I'm really, really interested. All right, we're inside Soundstage 21 getting ready to enter Blood Moon Dark Offerings. Uh, this was in the same location as Hellblock, so you had this sort of open soundstage where they have a queue. Yeah, very excited to see this house. I've heard a lot of good things about this one. All right, with Blood Moon done, it is time to head into another scare zone, Dr. Oddfellow's collection of horror. Well, good evening to you all. Good evening. Good evening. What a bunch of willing participants. I'm sure you're here for a bit of power. I know you're here for a lot of fear. <laughs> Do you plan to chase it? Yes! Oh, how disappointing. But only a few morsels really want to taste power. My heart is sad. But that's okay. Fire signs!
Water sign. Air sign. Earth sign. Yeah. Okay. So you do exist. <laughs> Wonderful. Tell me, what makes you so hesitant? Is it the fear? Do you not really want to chase it? Oh, go on. A quiet crowd like this would never get what they need. <laughs> now that sounds like a little bit more participation. You know what's special about this evening? There's not a moon in sight! We will use this power for all kinds of festivities. <laughs> all you need is but pay close attention to the history that I have laid out for you this evening. Don't take your time. You will find it. So we're here in the five and nine because it's kind of quiet in here and the scare zone's really loud and really foggy outside. We're gonna do one, two, three punch with Blood Moon Dark Offerings, the collection of horror, and Dark Zodiac. Blood Moon Dark Offerings was a very beautiful house, I will say. One that really stands out with that scenery and one I'm really excited to see on the Unmasking the Horror Tour. However, I don't really feel like the scares were there as much. I feel like it's almost like a Demon's Pier situation where it's a very beautiful house, but it doesn't really pack much punch in terms of the scares, but that just could have been the run that I got. As for the two scare zones though, Dr. Oddfellow's Collection of Horror is a great table of constant scare zone with different characters from all around the park, as well as Oddfellow himself on the stage. As you can see, he actually broke his cane while he was on stage, which was absolutely awesome. A great moment to capture on camera. And he's just roaming around, which is really, really awesome. I love that he's just kind of roaming around, taking pictures with people, talking to people with a mic. He's not pre-recorded. That's really, really something I really do love about that scare zone. And then with Dark Zodiac, it's really interesting. I really like the sort of creature design here. It's something very different. Not really what we were expecting. Not super set heavy, but that's okay because the creatures, the fog, the chainsaws, everything kind of works together. Not my favorite of the scare zones, but definitely a fun one and one you're going to want to experience um, over here in the Hollywood section. Now we only have one more scare zone to hit and it is my most anticipated one, Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror. So let's see how this one pans out. I'm really, really excited to go check this one out. However, one thing I cannot ignore as we're walking the Jungle of Doom is the beautiful glow of the mouse die in sign. It is so good to see it back, especially when there are rumors of them turning it off. They turn it on, keep it on. It's something we all know and love, even though Mel's is not open right now, but absolutely beautiful sight to see nonetheless. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
jungle of doom. I love that scare zone. I've loved all the scare zones, actually, a really, a whole lot. But this scare zone really stood out to me. I love getting to see Oddfellow, getting to see that part of the lore play out. We don't really get to see Oddfellow in too many of the other scare zones, like, more directly. So it's great to see him at the front of this scare zone doing a little performance with the Jade Skull. The creature design in here is absolutely fantastic. My favorite of the year when it comes to the scare zones. And the lush settings that we showed off in the scare zone updates all really come to life with the fog and the lighting and everything. So really an A-plus scare zone all around. Central Park always does great scare zones but this one is especially amazing now it's getting late getting kind of tired i know i haven't done any of like the big things that everyone's gonna do but you know it's me it's my way i want to enjoy the event and there's one house i want to check out before i leave here and i think i know the perfect one to end the night off with and that last house is going to be universal monstrous unmasked phantom of the opera invisible man dr Jekyll, mr hyde and hunchback of notre dame 75 minute wait let's head in there Okay, so no spoilers review of Monsters Unmasked. This is by far my favorite house that I've experienced tonight. The sets in here are immaculate. You get a lot of time with each monster. Each monster gets their moment. It's not like Legends Collide where it's heavily skewed towards one or the other. Everybody gets their time to shine here. Lots of set variety, uh, which I really like compared to last year's version. And yeah, this is definitely an environment I really want to come back to, this like Victorian era Paris. It's going to be one that I'm going to do a lot more. Um, and I'm really happy it panned out. This is one I was definitely looking forward to for sure. And just as you exit, you get a little bit of an ad for Peacock's Halloween Horror Program Slate. Um, they have the Halloween Horror Bar, which I want to check out when I come back on Sunday, um, as well as the other things that I missed. But yeah, really interesting advertisement at the end here for Peacock. Really looks like they're trying to lean people to go to that service. Okay, hello everyone. I'm back. Uh, it's not nighttime. It's daytime. Here's the deal. I wasn't able to finish all 10 on Friday night, so I took a day break, and I'm back here. It is Sunday now, and we're going to just finish the other five, but I also wanted to show off some of the other stuff, like some of the food, because I didn't try any of the food last time, and some of the other experiences, like the Death Eaters, like the Peacock Bar, and things like that. But this time, I'm actually going in with a game plan. Uh, before, I was kind of stuck doing Stay and Scream and Richter's, which I didn't really want to do, but now we're going to be doing Stay and Scream over in New York. Stay and Screaming specifically for Stranger Things. So right now, I'm hanging out in New York. I'm about to get in line for Stay and Scream, and let's kind of have a do-over, do the five houses I missed, give those reviews. Without further ado, let's get into this. Alright, we're now moving, getting ready to go into Stranger Things, one of my more anticipated houses, and we're hitting it right at the beginning, opening at 5.15, so I'm really, really excited. Interesting to see how this one goes, because this one's going to be a really, really popular one, so give me my thoughts afterwards. Okay, just got out of Stranger Things, really liked it, really got scared a lot. I think it might be because it's my first house at night. All the big scenes from the show, as you would expect. Um, I really liked sort of the set layout. I don't want to dive into spoilers about like what's in there, what's not in there. Um, I'll do that in a later video, but I think this is a good uh, tent pole house for the year, a good headliner for the year. And uh, yeah, I had a good time with it. Scared me a lot, just like Halloween, which was interesting because it was in the same location. They both scared me a lot, so yeah, pretty good time. All right, done with Stranger Things. Now time to head to Dueling Dragons, Choose Thy Fate. Right now, we're doing Stay and Scream. Only says 15 minutes, but this looks like it looks like a walk-on. All right, hitting a 25-minute standby for Exorcist Believer. I'm not ready. I feel like this house is absolutely going to rock my world and not the best way possible. Maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. Maybe it'll be a surprise. Who knows? All right, moving from Exorcist to Yeti Campground Kills. We've been all over the place, and I'm going to do some reviews after this one because we got the one, two, three punch of Dueling Dragons, Yeti, and Exorcist. Uh, let's just say, short review. Exorcist did indeed rock my world, but let's see what Yeti has in store for us. Okay, popped off into Minions to talk about the three houses we just did in a row. Actually, let's first talk about Minions. Minions Cafe, it's open during Horror Nights this year, which is really, really cool. A great first time addition, um, a good quick place to kind of chill out. It's just normal as it is uh, during the day in the park, but we did three houses. First up, we did Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate. Completely floored me with the special effects, with the sets, with the facades, with everything. It was so fantastic. And without spoiling, uh, I thought the sort of Choose Your Fate, so they, they teased this, so it's not really a spoiler. Um, that aspect of it was really, really cool. It was interesting. It reminded me of another house. If you know, you know. But yeah, really, really 
really good time. Um, not my favorite house that I've seen thus far, um, but that's okay. It's still a pretty good one. Then after that, we went straight to the Exorcist Believer. This house truly knocked me off my feet. This house was very, very scary. Really, really cool set-wise, though. I was actually pretty surprised because I wasn't expecting it to be, you know, with the last Exorcist house, it was pretty um, repetitive when it came to the sets. But this one had a lot of variety, had a lot of stuff going on, and um, it was really, really cool. Good time, and I'm really excited to see the movie to see what the context of a lot of these scenes are. Then finally, we went to Yeti Campground Kills. Um, that house was a lot of fun. Did what the original house did, but in a different way. Lots and lots of Yetis. Um, an interesting sort of story through line. But yeah, good time. I think we're going to go and more explore the scare zones and some of the other aspects of the event now overall really liking what we did stranger things dueling dragons yeti exorcist all good times knocked out all the soundstage houses and yeah now it's time to head into horror nights and see what's actually happening in the streets and maybe grab some food i'm actually getting kind of hungry here even though i'm inside a minions cafe i want to try some horror nights food. i want to try something from this last of us booth here it's the specialty twisted tater they have for this year um it's an all new one and i'm a twisted tater fan it's my favorite it's probably horror nights item so i want to get something savory so i think that's a good way to do it. Overall thought it was pretty good. It's a typical twisted tater, but the porcini powder, which you can get as a separate item, was actually a really good touch, and the mushroom sauce was extra special too. I know they also have this on a corn dog, and I want to try that later on, but so far so good. I'm really, really liking this, and I will be getting this again. Oh, don't worry about him. Just a disgruntled employee. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Have you come here for horror? Yeah. Have you come here for fear? Yeah. <laughs> then I'm sure you are all in the right place. <laughs> for tonight, you will see the things unseen, the oddities of our time. You will see the ghouls and the monsters, the spirits and the dolls. <laughs> and only then, once you have conquered your fear, will I bestow upon you the greatest gift of all, the gift of immortality. Now, doesn't that sound nice? Come closer, my friends. I don't bite. Watch. <laughs> Do not be afraid, for it was fear that led me to the power I now possess. Through fear, you will be an immortal creature as I am. And I do wish that for all of you. I wish for you to shed your mortal coil. Be done with this mundane life. <laughs> Go into the night, my friends. Go see the creature. The ghouls, the horror. Come and see me, and I will bestow upon you an immortal elixir. <laughs> now, some of you may not survive, but that's a price I'm willing to take. <laughs> Go, my friends, and enjoy your night. <laughs> All right, that was awesome, but we're now going to go into Dark Zodiac.
Oh shoot, we came at the perfect time. Looks like we're about to see Megan. Yes, I've been waiting for this. Alright, we're headed towards Diagon Alley to see some Death Eaters, but look at this Hot Fellow symbol projected on the ground. Really, really great to see this. Alright, and now we're moving into the Peacock Halloween Horror Bar. It is a party in here. And as you can see, we have a mean greet back here, the Purge Girl. Very nice to have this little addition right here. And it's really cool, they're showing clips from Peacock horror films. So here we have Us, great movie by the way. But it's really cool they're having this uh, Peacock screen with some different horror classics, modern classics on here. Okay, a little bit of a recap since we've been kind of bouncing here, there, and everywhere. Um, we did visit the Peacock Halloween Horror Bar, and it's a lot of fun. It's definitely the nightclub feel they said it was going to be. Uh, we didn't catch David S. Pumpkins tonight um, just because he's kind of been fluctuating in and out with the approach girl who's there, who's really cool to see. I did get my picture with her, which is really, really neat. All right, we got the sour apple funnel fries. Shout out Losh for holding it up. These look crazy. This is a big portion for what, $10? It's like 10 bucks. God, Zombie Chris is also diving into them. Woo, it's heavy, it's heavy. And just so you know, those sour apple funnel fries are located in the front of the park in Music Plaza in this carnival food truck. Okay, doing a little bit of a review on those sour apple funnel fries. Very, very good. No, but the apple flavor was really um, not super overpowering, um, but it was pretty interesting. Um, definitely had a unique touch to it. And they gave you a lot. It was only like $10, and they gave you a lot of stuff for it. So. Not a bad value, actually a pretty decent sweet treat, although I, like I said, I would definitely share this with people. And this is where everything went south. See, I had one more house to complete all 10. I needed to hit the last of us all the way in the back of the park, but those sour apple funnel fries, as good as they were, did not sit well with me. And I spent time debating whether I was just gonna stick it out, try to do the last of us, try to get it done, just so I can talk about it in this video. But then I really just didn't feel that great, and I decided to call it quits a bit early, and I didn't even film an outro for this video. Regardless of this though, I had a fantastic opening weekend at Halloween Horror Nights. I really enjoyed all of the houses I got to walk through, and the scare zones have been growing on me with each time I pass through them. But I think the thing that stands out the most this opening weekend are all the new friends I met at the event. Losh, Zombie Chris, Eddie Tainment, The Horror Fiend, so many to count, as well as some of you all that I met in the park. It just made me super happy to be covering this event and being here on opening weekend where everyone's here, everyone's hype, everyone's excited, and just getting to run houses with those people, talking about it, hanging out, trying food, seeing the scare zones, filming stuff. It was so much fun. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this very chaotic opening weekend vlog. I apologize if it was a bit all over the place. It's just the chaos of opening weekend, I guess. But if you've been to Halloween Horror Nights 32 this 
past weekend. Let me know what your favorite things were. Please try to keep it spoiler free as not everyone has obviously seen the event yet. It's only been one weekend. And if you haven't gone yet, what are you most excited to see at Halloween Horror Nights this year? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And just thank you all for watching the videos. And thank you for sticking with me through all of HHN prep season. And we're here. It's just so great to finally be at the event. And just thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video and all the videos in general. And that's all I got. Again, thank you for watching this video. And I'll, of course, see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody, and happy Halloween.